Hello, my name is Paulo Sayende and this is Truth TV. Now, judging from the last podcast and the few sets of messages that have come to our spirit, it is uh, clear to us that God may just be particular about shepherds and leaders of churches. On the strength of that understanding, we have another podcast today titled, Don't Kill Pastors. So, in order to understand what or who may be killing pastor, we then need to understand the position of the pastor from the perspective of the owner of the church. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, Jesus was talking about the confession of Peter. And then he says, Simon bar Jonah, I call you Peter, which means the rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now, the rock in that verse or the foundation stone is the confession of Peter of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so the Messiah is saying, upon the confession of my Lordship, I will build an institution called church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So clearly from the position of the builder, the ownership of the church undeniably belongs to the person of Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15, the Bible says, I will send you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you through knowledge and understanding. So the word of God, Jesus Christ says, I will send you shepherds. In other words, pastors and leaders of God's people are in the employment list of God. So the position of a pastor or the leader over God's people must not be self-instituted. Neither should the people choose for themselves who should pastor them. So in every church is a triangular relationship. On top, we have the Messiah who is the employer. And then to one side is the pastor or shepherd. And to the other side, you have the people. It is important that we understand this organogram so we know who could keep pastor, what could keep pastor, and how the pastor could be killed. The first example we have here of a pastor or the leader over God's people who got killed is in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 11 and 12. His name was King Saul over Israel. The Bible recorded that before Samuel came, who was a priest, to perform the ritual according to the ordinance of the Almighty God, Saul was pressured by the people to execute the priestly rule. According to the defense of King Saul, he said he saw the people scattering and leaving, and so, out of the pressure, he decided to go against the law of the Almighty God. And in that instance, the Bible recorded that God sacked King Saul. In our analysis, you realize that number one, the sacking of King Saul shows you that it is God who appoints the pastor or the leader or the shepherd over his people. So the spiritual separation of God from the leader or the pastor is equal to death, just as the spiritual separation from Adam was equal to death, even though Adam was still physically walking about. Bible history also told us that Saul was sacked after just two years of his reign. And after that, Saul still reigned in Israel for another 40 years. After the sacking of King Saul, the Bible says the Spirit of God left King Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord entered into him. So, which means that the fact that Saul was still king for another 40 years didn't mean that God had not rejected him. So which means God can sack you and still leave you to be walking. And when that happens, the triangle will be broken. The position of the employer or the Messiah at the top will be removed. So you have just one straight line between the pastor and the people. So judging from Saul's experience, the fact that the pastor is still in the assembly doesn't mean he is in the employment list of God. The second example of a leader who was sacked by the employer is Moses in Numbers chapter 20 verse 11. You remember the first time the Israelites complained of thirst. Moses was asked to strike the rod and water gushed out and the people had water to drink. The second time they mounted the same pressure on Moses and Moses was asked this time to speak to the rock but because of the provocation Moses was pushed to strike the rod the first time and the second time and water came out anyway and then what happened was that Moses was sacked 
we get to understand what initiated the sacking of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 26. When he was addressing the people, he told them, Because of you, the Lord was angry with me. So, like Saul, the influence that caused Moses to go against the commandment of God came from the people. So, because of that momentary pressure, both Saul and Moses forgot who the employer is. There is a third example in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 23. This time, it was about King Herod. In this story, because of the affinity that the people have with their pastor or their leader, they gave glory to King Herod. They called him all types of names, Papa, you name it. They called him God. According to Acts 12, verse 23, Herod only failed when he refused to turn the glory back to his employer, the Almighty God. So from the example of King Herod, we can see that it is okay for people to gravitate towards their leader or their pastor. But it is the role of the pastor to understand who his or her employer is and then turn that glory back to the employer, the Almighty God. The people must be led to God. The people must know Jesus Christ as the Lord because that formed the basis, the rock upon which the church was built. He said, I will build my church upon this confession of my lordship and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now when the lordship of Jesus Christ is taken out, then the gates of hell will prevail. The power of the voice of the crowd of people must not dictate to the pastor or shepherd as much as the voice of the Holy Spirit should. It is Jesus Christ, the owner of the church, who should be glorified. King Herod failed in that. It is Jesus Christ, the owner of the church, who should be listened to. Moses failed in that. It is Jesus Christ, the owner of the church, who should be obeyed. King Saul failed in that. Look at what Jesus Christ said in John chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says, And I, if I be lifted up on the earth, then I will draw men unto me. So the exhortation of the people depends on who is lifted up. So every pastor or leader who has lost touch with the employer, the Messiah, will have to do a lot more of struggling to keep the people because that is all he or she has left. So to make it look like what has life, you have to do all the gimmicks, all the schemings, all the rasmatas, just so that people can feel the semblance of life that has gone. The story of the early church in the New Testament told us that the Berean Christians will always go home to confirm through scriptures what they heard from their leader. The reason is because they just wanted to be sure that their pastor or shepherd still has a relationship with his employer. Apostle Paul made two profound statements. Number one, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. Secondly, he said, if any angel will say to you what is outside the scripture that has been said by Jesus Christ, he said, let such an angel be accursed. So the flow of influence in every church must be from the top, the Messiah, to the messenger, and then to the people. So the pastor, or the shepherd, or the king, or the leader is an in-between, a messenger, not the Messiah.